Hey gang, it's Amy here with another furniture flipping video. This time I wanted to explore the idea of flipping granny rockers. Real quick before I start talking about that, I just want to tell you, check in the description. I am giving away a free uh, furniture flip worksheet that helps you with pricing furniture flips or figuring out how much you should pay for something if you want to make a certain profit on it. So grab that in the description link below. Well, if you watch this channel, you probably also enjoy watching Jamie and Sarah's channel. And if you aren't, you should check it out. And several months ago, probably last summer, I guess, they they came up with this idea, at least they kind of got it started on the internet, of taking these old kind of nerdy grandma rockers that nobody wanted anymore and just ripping the skirts off of them to make them look more like something you would get from a kind of retro, groovy, modern furniture company. And so that has become a big fun thing for some of us who flip furniture to do and I decided is there anything is that something people can still do anymore or are they all gone has everybody figured it out has there been this there was this big race to find them and flip them and so I wanted to do a little research today to see are, can you even get those anymore in a market the size of mine here in Dallas um, I was gonna go out of town this weekend down to South Texas and I was gonna do a little research there and see if some thrift stores there might have some of that still because I haven't seen much of it anymore in the Dallas area, but I, I had a sick kiddo and we had to change our plans. So I'm gonna do research up here in Dallas and, and see, are there any more? Can you still get a bargain on those chairs? Can you still flip them? What's the current status of that? I'm also going to explore some of the different ways that you can remove the skirts or tuck the skirts under and make them look like they don't have skirts anymore because depending on how your chair is put together, you may not be able to rip the skirt off. If it's not finished on the bottom, then you can't rip the skirt off. Some people have then gone in and put some fringe across it, but that I find to be a seriously uh, less cute solution <laughs> than finding some other way to make them not look like they have skirts hanging down, but still have something that's finished on the edge. So we're gonna explore some of the different uh, options you might have, or at least what you should look for if you do find one of these what you should be looking for to see if it's going to be easy to flip or hard to flip. And I'm going to go through one that I found. It's not in the most popular colorways out there, and it's one that I am probably going to keep and use in my house. But um, we did some experimenting of some of our different options if it's not a real easy one to just rip the skirt off of. There are a few different problems you can encounter that make it uh, less simple to just take a skirt off and resell it. So we'll talk about some of those. If you do find or have uh, one of these kind of old retro rocking chairs or just an old skirted chair that that seems a little uh, old-fashioned looking and you think that if you took the skirt off you could give it some new life and revive it there are a few things you want to look at before you just start tearing into it when you when you find that chair you want to flip it over and you want to look underneath and first of all you want to see how the bottom the very bottom part of the upholstery finishes out does it come all the way around under the edge of the chair and finish or is there just a rough seam that's cut and stops right at the bottom of the chair? Because there's a skirt on top of it, some manufacturers do not finish out all the way around the bottom edge. Um, they just put the skirt on top and that effectively finishes it because you're not gonna see the bottom part. But obviously that's gonna be a problem if you rip the skirt off, you don't have a finished edge on the bottom. So that's not gonna work. So you need to look, look for that first off. Another thing you need to look at some of these have legs already, they're not rockers, and if they have the little tapered legs, then you're in good shape because the legs are pretty and they give it that mid-century vibe as soon as you expose those legs. If it has a swivel rocker, a lot of people still like them with the swivel rocker, but the way that the swivel rockers on the bottom are connected, you need to, you need to look at that and figure out whether it's going to work to pull the skirt off because some of them, like the one that I have, and um, I'll see if I can show you a video of that here, it is just attached with this very wide bar that goes runs from the center front of the chair to the center back and is screwed in front and back and then the entire mechanism for the swivel rocker is attached to that bar. But the thing is, if you pull the skirt off, you see that bar sitting there, it's attached right in the front at the bottom of the chair and so it's very visible. And one thing that people have come up with as options to, to avoid pulling the skirts off just because it, it can be a little hard and sometimes you can tear things. Um, 
and also because of what I talked about with the sometimes having a raw edge that's not finished there is some people have started flipping them under, stapling them up instead of ripping them off. And that's another option that you can do on some of these. The problem if you leave the swivel rocker mechanism in and you have one of those big bars running from front to back like I talked about, you're gonna have to figure out a way in that case that you can add some pieces of wood, some little one by two pieces of wood across the front of the rocker so that when you tuck the skirt under, it will even out the, the fold that you're making instead of having this big lump where, the, where that piece of wood is running across from front to back. So that is one option. You could take some one by twos and uh, attach them to the front part underneath the skirt in the front part of the chair and then pull the skirt under and staple it. That would be an option and then leave the swivel rocker mechanism that you have there. That would be a possibility. Another possibility, which is what I decided to do, was take off the swivel rocker mechanism completely and then put some legs on it. What I did in the case of the one I had, I went ahead and decided that I would tuck all the, tuck all the skirt under, staple it under and trim it, and then put the legs on so that the legs could go on clean. But I think that if I did it again, I would probably go ahead and attach the legs and then I would staple, I would fold under and staple the uh, skirt, even though that means I would have to do some cutting right on the corners of the skirt and, and kind of pulling the upholstery around it neatly. I still think that would be an easier way to go and then you also wouldn't have to worry about the top of the connectors of the legs showing. So I think that's what I would do next time if I were doing it that way. But overall, after tucking the skirt under and attaching the legs, it turned out to have a finished look and look really cute and much more updated. And the little mid-century modern legs that I got were a cute solution. So it's a little more expensive to do it that way. You have to buy legs. There are, there are legs, I think it'll be less to get them to order them on Amazon or online someplace, but as usual, I was uh, just doing it on you know on the fly that day and I, I wanted to know if I could find them locally and I did source these at Home Depot just the legs and you have to get the metal connectors that the legs attach to. What I got was the ones that are angled. It's a little tricky to use the angled ones and because of the way your chair is on the bottom I'm not sure that it's really even that much better to get the angled ones. You can get either the straight connectors or the angled connectors. If you get the angled connectors make sure that you math out so that the ang that they're angling out when they're when they are attached fully. So you have to kind of make sure that you're getting them on the right way. The other experiment I decided to try and do uh, this time because like I said I'm probably going to keep this chair for myself and I decided well what's something new that I can add to this video that we can try and see if it works and I can report back to you on how it worked. I had these raw wood legs from Home Depot and I decided I wanted to do just a quickie finish on them and I didn't want to mess up one of my paintbrushes. I do have stain just on my shelves right here in my in my room where I keep all my supplies. Um, but I didn't want to have to use something, get some paintbrush or some other rag dirty with the stain, and then also have to do clear coat or sealant after that. And so I decided I'm gonna try just getting my little thing of Restora finish, which is something I've mentioned in other videos for fixing up some of your uh, furniture that you're gonna re that you're gonna flip or resell. And I decided I would just try this on it, on the raw wood, because it what it is, is it has a little bit of color. It doesn't have very much tint. It's just to fix up scratches and little messed up places. But, and then it has uh, enough like oil in it or sealant in it to help go ahead and finish it out so you don't have to do any additional finish on top. It's made to go on wood that's already got a finish on it. But I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna try it. What's the worst that can happen? I'm gonna try it on these four little legs. So I got a, an old sock and I, a clean sock and I wiped it on and I did a couple of coats and it made it, it's much, much lighter than what the color of the Restore finish is supposed to be because like I said, it's only slightly tinted. It's not heavily colored. This one I have is called Walnut, so it's a fairly dark, medium dark color and it came out real light, light on the legs. But I did feel like it gave it that mid-century look because there was a lot of that kind of uh, blondish wood, not really yellowy, but a fairly light wood that was used a lot around that time. And so I liked the way it looked and I just did a couple coats of that and left it at that. There is another thing you can use for one step that I didn't have any of that on my shelf, but it's, you can use, there's a, like a polyurethane and stain combined kind of one step 
Um, you could get a small can of that at, at your hardware store and you could just paint that on and then you'd be finished in one step. So I think for something like that, just these little bitty legs, it's nice to have a one step product to, to make it quick and simple. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time and mess up a lot of brushes or rags just to have to do that small project. So anyway, I was pretty happy with the way that looked and I just thought I would report back. You can, you can use it this way on raw wood but um, it'll be much, much, much lighter than the color that you have picked on the can. So it's just going to be a, a tiny bit of color that it adds. In the end, after looking around and seeing what's available in Dallas, I checked Facebook Marketplace, I checked Craigslist. It was very hard to find any real bargains on those little rockers. I found on Craigslist, I did find a couple that were marked at like $40, um, which is still not super cheap. but. What I found on Facebook Marketplace that surprised me was that, I mean, everything was being listed for about $100, every one of these chairs, even the ones that didn't have the skirts taken off. And I think what has happened now is that, you know, even if you're not somebody who watches YouTube and furniture flipping videos or knows about Jamie and Sarah, there are people who have, you know, an old rocker that they want to sell that's in decent shape, even though it's not really in style. And they probably don't think it's going to fetch a lot, but, but before they list it, they search under those search terms and see what's being sold and what their competition will be and they are probably surprised to find that they're all being sold for you know a hundred dollars but because they've done that research before they list theirs then they list theirs at their at that price too and wouldn't you do that research i mean even if you're not watching you should be even if you're not watching furniture flipping videos if you're going to list something on facebook marketplace before you do that you should go ahead and search under the terms that you're going to list it under see what else is going to be sold at the same time you're selling yours and what people's choices are going to be and how much they're going to you know be able to get something for and then you can price yours accordingly you know we all of us furniture flippers say that in all our videos that what your market is selling things for is the single most you know determining factor to what you can list your stuff for so so these people who know nothing about this trend and they haven't pulled the skirts off their rockers were like, hey, I have a rocker and all these are listed $100. I'm gonna list mine at $100 too. And so I think that it's very hard to find one that's in good condition that uh, you could just pull the skirt off and then the next day go back and relist it for three times what you paid for it, which is what people were able to do even you know last year, even a few months ago. But I think that, that that's become such a big trend that it has affected even the people who don't know anything about it because you can certainly search and see what else is being sold out there and so their value has skyrocketed thanks sarah and jamie you guys did a great job starting a trend that's really awesome um and even i think i've heard sarah say she can't find them anymore for a decent price so maybe time to move on to some kind of different flip but i did do this one i think it turned out cute and um like i said i'll probably keep it and use it in my house with the little cute legs that were added onto it. It is in, mine's in kind of a rose, rosy color and the colors that are the hottest if you do find them are the ones that really do look like they could be mid-century retro colors, not not the ones that this pinky rosy color feels more a little from the 80s to me probably, uh, but there are some, some of the rosy pale ones sell pretty well. I think that the greens and yellows and oranges that really have more of a 70s vibe or even earlier 70s, 60s, 50s. Those are the ones that are probably selling the best. So if you find one like that in good condition, hey, go for it. Uh, a lot of us can't find too many of them in our market anymore. Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments below, I'd love to hear from you. What are you flipping? What are you gonna be flipping next? And what's your favorite thing? What's been the best money for you? Have you found a category that you consistently can make good money in? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Let me know. Thanks for watching.